Hello everybody. I know it's been a really long time and I will make a video getting into that. Excuse how I look. I literally just got out of the shower to get ready for bed. But I've been telling people that I would make this video forever and I finally thought I just needed to do it because people want it and I want to help you guys. So tonight we're going to talk about stopping dog fights, preventing dog fights, and how to break them up, how I think is the best way to break them up. <music> talk about preventing dog fights if you see an off-leash dog try to turn around don't freak out don't panic just calmly turn around and walk the other way don't start yelling at the dog or anything like that if the dog doesn't notice you just turn around go a different way you can walk another way go around somewhere else if you see an off-leash dog and their owner is there yell to them yell them say leash your dog can you put your dog on a leash even if you have to lie and you're uncomfortable with their dog because their dog isn't acting like they're properly trained, yell to them, say, my dog's not friendly. Get them to put that dog on a leash, especially if you have leash laws. It's so important to pay attention to leash laws. We used to have a Husky named Thunder. I'll put a picture in. And he was extremely dog aggressive. He was very, very, very reactive to other dogs. It didn't matter their size. It didn't matter what they looked like. He would go for them the second he was in range. And we have always lived in a place with leash laws. And he has attacked three different dogs. And in every single case, he was leashed and the other dog was not. Thunder used to be walked on a leash that was bright orange and said no dogs because he was aggressive. A muzzle wasn't optimal for him. He always pulled it off and we always walked on a leash. Um, he would not freak out when dogs came by. He would only grab them when they came near. And so when we saw people, we'd get away from them. If we saw people coming with those off-leash dogs, we'd tell them, you know, he's not friendly, keep him away. And unfortunately, a lot of people who didn't listen, listen to the leash laws let their dog come up to him. And that's when things got bad. For example, one time what happened is a neighbor had their dog out and they were saying hello to Lucky. And Lucky, of course, likes other dogs and he was having a good time. And then the neighbor's dog started coming over towards Thunder. And we told her, can you grab her? He's not friendly. He'll go after other dogs. And she was like, no, he's acting really nice. And we we're like, no, he's not friendly. He will bite. And so she let her dog go up to him. She said he was acting friendly. So she thought she'd try. The second her dog came close enough, he nailed her. You cannot depend on what another dog's acting like all the time and whether or not they're friendly. If the owner says their dog isn't friendly, don't put your dog near them. Maybe they're saying it to lie. It doesn't matter. Don't risk your dog, okay? Thunder acted fine. He was pleasant. He'd sit, he'd wag his tail when he saw their dogs. But as soon as they were in biting range, he would go for them. And unfortunately, he attacked three different dogs in his lifetime, and every single time he was leashed, he was labeled as being dog aggressive, and other people let their dogs come up to him. But back to preventing fights. If a dog's coming near you, there's no owner to say, get them on a leash, something like that, and they already see you and they're coming towards you, yell at them. Tell them no, tell them stop, scare them away. Tell them sternly and loudly, scare them away from you. A lot of times they're not there to attack. They're there to see what you and what this other dog of their species is coming to go do. Get them away from you. And if they're following you, don't turn around. You don't want to give them the advantage of being behind you. Confront them. Tell them to get away. If your dog has good manners, get them in a sit-stay. You want to get between your dog and that strange dog. Get between them. You don't want your dog to feel like they have to advocate for themselves. You want to ensure for your dog, ensure for your dog, that you are going to protect them. They don't need to act out. And so, for example, when we see fakes in grocery stores with Lucky, I put him behind me and I stand between them. Obviously, we try to get out of the way, but we've had cases where the dogs are brought over to us and they get asked, oh, you want to play? And we're like, no, he's a service dog. He's working. And I put Lucky behind me. I want him to feel like I'm protecting him. He's safe. He doesn't need to growl. He doesn't need to bark. He has no reason to feel like that dog's a threat because I'm in front of them. Your dog, preferably get them out of the way and then go towards that other dog and shoo him away. Make yourself big, shoo him away, tell them no, tell them leave it, tell them get out of here. Anything to try to scare them away. Don't try to grab the dog. 
unless you're a hundred percent sure it's friendly you can get bit there are a lot of videos online of people going up to dogs that look really friendly and the dog nails them now this is for breaking up dog fights first i'll talk about other methods and then i'll talk about what i think is the best method for breaking up dog fights first there's a normal hitting kicking punching anything to get the dogs to stop attacking each other this is a really bad idea not only will a dog that's really in that drive to attack or really set on going after your dog or your dog after someone else's dog, they don't care how hard you hit them, how hard you kick them. Um, that takes the possibility of them redirecting that attention at you and then attacking you. And that's bad. You don't want to put your hands in the way where the other dogs can grab them or even your own dog could bite you on accident when they're trying to defend themselves from the other dog. You don't want to put your hands in the way. You don't want to put your legs in the way. And honestly, it's probably not going to work. My brother tried to break up a dog fight like that, and he ended up getting a nice big tooth hole in his arm. Another way that people used to break up dog fights is to yell or even to let go of their dog's leash. As people start yelling and screaming. It's not going to work. I'll tell you right now, it's not going to work. Um, if anything, it'll probably get the dogs riled up. It'll get them panicked. It'll get them frenzied. You don't want to start screaming and freaking out. You want to try to stay calm. Another thing people do to try to break up a dog fight is let go of their dog's leash to give their dog the opportunity to run. This I would never ever recommend because what will happen is if your dog does run, that dog attacking will probably chase your dog. And if that dog chases your dog who ran to get away from, all of a sudden the fight's way over there and you're over here and you can't stop it. So that just gives up any control you had over trying to stop that fight. Next there's citronella spray. Now citronella spray we have used before and I think it works very, very well, but not necessarily for actual attacks. We have used citronella spray before to try to prevent a fight that was starting to escalate or to break up tussles that we weren't able to get apart, but we've never used it on an actual fight. When it comes to citronella spray, it's really lemony smelling scent and dogs don't really like it. Um, odd one out, of course, Lucky likes it and he tries to eat it, but he eats everything. But it's a smell dogs don't like, specifically with our Great Pyrenees we've used it. Um, he's a very reactive dog and sometimes he has gotten to the point where he gets in tussles with Togo and they're going after each other and they don't want to stop fighting. And so in that case, a quick spray, it doesn't hurt them, it doesn't hurt their eyes, there's no need to go to the vet, it just is like, whoa, that stinks, and they stop and then you have a chance to regain control. We've used it quite a few times and it works really well. We've also used it to deter other dogs who are running up on us. Not, we don't use it on friendly dogs who are just coming by, um, but when a dog's coming and they're showing signs that they're gonna start something, we'll spray it and they can smell it and they back away. Another thing people talk about is pepper spray. Now pepper spray is a viable option to break up a big dog fight. It will probably stop them but you also run the risk of it blowing into your eyes, blowing into someone else's eyes, and blowing into your own dog's eyes. And pepper spray is probably gonna require a vet visit. Um, if anyone's sprayed it before, it's really oily. It, you can't really get it out. You'll probably need to go to the vet to get it out. And no one wants that. And you do, of course, run the risk if it is a really intense attack, the other dog might not stop if they get sprayed. But as a really cheap, very available option, I think it's fairly good. Though, again, it's something you'd want to use in a really extreme situation and you need to be really careful. There have been days where I carry a pepper spray and I've thought, you know, if a dog attacked us, I wouldn't be able to use it because it's so windy out that it would spray me, it would spray Lucky, it would spray the other dogs. It wouldn't be safe, so I would be stuck with nothing to do. Now, one of the most common methods I hear of is the wheelbarrow method. And in case someone didn't know, it's when you grab a dog's back legs, usually the one that's attacking, but if there's two people, you grab both dogs' back legs, one person gets each dog, and you pull them back from each other. And what that will do is the dog is gonna redirect and look at you and let go of the other dog and hopefully give you a second to control the fight. Now, I think this method is really crappy because of a few reasons. First of all, if the dog is slimmer, and it doesn't need to be a super thin dog, if they're slimmer, if they're a longer dog, they will be able to bite you. The idea of the wheelbarrow method is that they can't get you because you're behind them. They can, they can absolutely bite you from that position. And I know they can. 
it is pretty easy for a lot of dogs to swing around and bite you if you're grabbing their back feet, even though you have them up in the air, especially for dogs who are slimmer, like I said. Another thing is that it redirects that anger, that excitement towards you. When it comes to dog fights, you don't want to get involved unless you have a way to stop it. Getting yourself involved just to try to stop it is a bad idea. You don't want that fight to come onto you. If you're going to go in and intervene, you need to be sure you can stop it. Now I'll talk about two options that people recommend normally, but I can't really say too much on because I've never tried them and I also don't find them necessary. One is a knife. I have heard many people say they carry a knife for dogs that attack and I have a few issues with that. One is in some states you're not going to be protected if you knife someone's dog to death because they attacked you or they attacked your dog. Um, two, most people, including myself, even if their dog's being attacked, would not have the heart to stab another dog. And three, again, if that dog is really set on attacking, they don't care. Um, there's a really sad story about a service dog who got attacked in a Walmart by a pet and people were knifing the pet dog to try to get it off of the service dog and it wouldn't let go. So it's not necessarily a viable option. It's super extreme and it's really not proven to be very effective. Last one I'll talk about before I get to the one I'd recommend is tasers. Now, when it comes to tasers, I know one trainer that I love, uh, Susan Grill, she had always told me to get a taser for dogs. She said that the noise, the crackling will scare them away most of the time. And if not, you have a taser. I can't say much for this. Where we live, tasers are not available to people unless you have a weapons license. And either way, I wouldn't feel comfortable carrying a taser around for a dog attack. Um, I feel like it's really unnecessary and it can pose a threat to other people or other dogs who could get in the way. And you know, if the crackling doesn't work, you have to be prepared to actually tase a dog. This is a method I would recommend for breaking up a dog fight. It utilizes something you should always have on hand. And it's something that is fairly, fairly easy to do. And that would be using a leash. Lucky's in bed, so I can't really use him as a model. So I have <laughs> stand in Lucky here to show us how this works. This method is great because not only does it stop a dog fight, no matter what, there's no way a dog is gonna be able to resist it eventually, but it also uses something you will always have on hand, or at least I really, really hope you do. Even if you don't have leash laws and your dog works off leash, you should always have a leash. It is an invaluable tool. You should always have it in case of an emergency or something like this. You should always have a leash with you, even if it's just a slip lead. So this is how it would work. There are two ways this might happen. One might be you're just holding a leash or you have a leash that's really long you can use or it's the leash that's attached to your dog. It works the same both ways. Say Domino is the one that has a grip on the other dog and will not let go and the other dog's trying to get away. You wanna try to focus on the dog that has a grip on the other dog and won't let go, the instigator. You're gonna take the leash, wrap it around their neck, twist it, just cross the rump lines, and tighten. It looks mean, it looks horrible, but it will make them let go. You tighten it. They might let go right away, they might not let go. You hold it there until they let go. Some dogs might be so intense in a fight that they won't let go until they've passed out, and that's the point. It will make them let go no matter what. Eventually they will not be able to breathe and they will let go. And that will give you a few seconds to get that dog hooked up to a leash, something tied around its neck, get the situation under control. This might sound extreme, but honestly, it is far more useful than any other method because it's guaranteed to get the other dog to let go. It uses something that you're always going to have with you, or at least I hope you will. And it's also something that will rarely require a vet visit. There are shelter workers who use this, there are behaviorists who use this, there are veterinarians who use this. It is a surefire way to get the dog to let go. And this works if a dog is attacking a person too. If they bite someone and they won't let go, wrap the leash around the neck, cross it, tighten it until they let go. All right, so I know this was a short video, but I hope it helps anyone who deals with dog fights a lot, whether you work in a shelter or maybe you just have a dog that's extremely aggressive and they get into these situations. I don't know. I know there are gonna be people who think that method is really mean and you guys can think that, that's fine. 
but when it comes to my dog or another person being attacked, I will get that dog to let go in the safest and quickest way possible, and that's going to be it. Anyways, thank you everybody for watching. I know it's been a long time. I'll probably make a video on why we've been gone, involving Rocky's surgery and all that. But for now, it's just this leash video because I had told people I'd make it for a while and I never got around to it. And I was going to use Lucky as a model, but he always goes to sleep the second I come down here. So we had Domino fill in. And uh, Domino was not hurt in the making of this. He feels very good and he's very happy. Good night.